Hey everybody, Snake Doc back here. We're going to do an unboxing here of a new pistol that I picked up. And as we can see here, we have the Sturm Ruger, Ruger Company. The good old Phoenix Bird right there. And this looks like one of their older cases, doesn't it? So let's see what's inside. Oh my god. You gotta be kidding me, right? No, I'm not kidding you. It's a Ruger KP89. Unfortunately, this is the one with the safety. I kind of wanted a DC model, but beggars can't be choosers. So, this is the stainless, which is why it's the K P89 9mm. Happens to have Hogue grips on right now. I do have the original grip panels here. The Hogues just feel so much better, though. Um, we'll notice that the spare magazine's missing, but the mag loader is here. And that is because the spare magazines that came with this, this had two 10 round magazines and then the one 15 round magazine. So I took those 10 round magazines and sold them on eBay for 40 bucks. And CDNN has the 17 round Metgar magazines, uh, brand new for 15 uh, Sorry, that was my dog. For $15. Um, and $6.99 flat rate shipping. So two 17 round mags are on their way to me right now for the grand total of $37. So that was awesome. I had no use for the 10 round mags. If you've ever seen the 10 round mags, um, the plastic base on those is about this big and then it holds 10 rounds from there on up. Um, these guns came out during the Clinton ban era. And that's why you'll find a good chunk of these will be issued with 10 round mags instead of the 15 round. Uh, Metgar makes 15 and 17 rounds. Metgar, I believe, made these factory mags. Uh, the difference on the Metgar aftermarket mags that weren't sold as a Ruger magazine is they won't have the Ruger. There you can see. They won't have that Ruger base plate on them. They'll actually just have the typical flat uh, metal base plate like you see on standard sig mags and beretta mags and all the other stuff um so anyhow i picked this up uh from a guy on a michigan gun forum that i'm a member of because i live here in michigan where it's freezing cold and we're supposed to get uh, some freezing sleet and rain tonight so it's been a unbelievable winter here this year um, I'm sure some of you uh, in the Midwest and northern states have experienced some of that stuff. And even as far south as Texas, I've heard, has got some snow. So, um, on anyways, this is an aluminum frame, stainless steel slide, double action, single action. Um, it has a safety that acts as a decocker. So, unfortunately, you can't do cocked and locked on these. So, we'll go ahead and show that right now. There you can see that the hammer is back. When you go to put it on safe, it decocks it. So it's just like the Beretta 92 and where you can't carry it cocked and locked. And the safety decocker is on the slide as opposed to being on the frame. Um, you'll notice there's no slide serration. So you actually have to use the safety wings to do your slide manipulation. Um, you can get it from the front because it is scalloped. Um, in a couple different places so you can actually manipulate it here um, Hopefully that picked up sometimes when the pistols make noise it drowns the mic out. So I apologize but uh, I, My first semi-automatic firearm and nine millimeter that I ever purchased was a p95 DC did not have the rail It was just a p95 decocker had the blued slide on it and I got that from, I think, a pawn shop, if I remember back. I paid like $240 for it out the door, and it came with two 15-round mags, I believe. I think it had two, or it had one, and I picked one up from um, Gander Mountain or something at that time. But anyhow, uh, I'm going to have three for this. I'm going to this is an outstanding condition. The only spot on here is it has an idiot mark right here on the frame, which there you can see it from the disassembly. So um, I guess we can look at, I'll show disassembly really quick. So there's an ejector right here that's sticking up. 
and you got to flip that forward and then it just stays down in that position. Then all you do is you just move the slide back just a little bit so that you can push and there you can see the lever starts coming out and the lever is going to stay captured so it stays there and then you can just pull the slide off. Um, you can see it has a swinging link like a 1911 but it has a really nice um, recoil rod that's nice machined and then uh, your, your um, recoil spring. So I believe he had that assembled incorrectly. I hadn't had that apart all the way but he had the wrong end of the spring on the recoil rod I'm pretty sure. Um, so here's the out the barrel all stainless construction and uh, a, a nice feed ramp on there. Um, I'm gonna assume that this pistol has an extremely low round count but it really doesn't matter on these because they're just oh, so overbuilt it's crazy. So um, it, you can see it does have a firing pin safety and that is spring-loaded so um, that would be actuated by this arm right here and there we'll take a look at the internals real quick um, look at just how stout and robust the trigger bar is and everything I, Ruger is a casting company so a lot of those parts are are uh, cast or um, the, the whole frame is cast from aluminum and look at how thick the slide rails are it's crazy you just you just can't believe how thick that is it's it's unbelievable so everybody says you know the the old rugers the p series they're built like tanks and without a doubt they are so let's flip that link back and we're going to push the guide rod in it's going to sit in place right there and you can see that little tit that sticks out on the end of that guide rod that's going to hold that link um in place we're going to Put our slide back on the frame and we just have to line up that notch to that spot so that way when you push this back carefully you get that right in that spot so that it can go all the way through and there it snaps in for you so um, and then when you put your magazine back in instead of having to reach through your ejection port that's going to put that ejector back up for you and then um, you can do a function test you can see it's gonna lock the magazine's gonna lock the slide open. You can eject the magazine. Our ejector is up. There you can see it right there. We can close the slide. We know the safety is off right now. We're in single action. We know the chamber is empty, so we can pull the trigger. There it fires. Our trigger is just gonna reset. Here's our double action mode. And everything seems to be working. If you want, you can hold the trigger back, cycle the slide let the trigger out slowly hear the reset go off and then watch our trigger fall again so obviously without a magazine in there there is not a magazine disconnect on this um, we can go into safe mode and that will completely disable the trigger so instead of locking things up where you you know um, it, it disables the trigger so you're back on to uh, fire mode and then you can start in double action you can manually cock it and start in single action every shot thereafter is going to be in single action uh, unless your primer doesn't go off and then you would have double strike capability with your double action we can see we have three dot sights they are kind of low profile but um they're definitely usable uh, um, when I had my P95 back in the day, I put some orange paint here and green dots, uh, green paint in the rear. I'm going to leave these as white because I want to leave this in stock condition. Um, it's just in, it's, it's in really, really nice shape, like almost unfired it seems like. I'm sure it has been fired, and I'm definitely going to fire it, so it doesn't much matter. Uh, but it's, to me, some people say they're just big clunky looking things but I just think it's really cool looking because these pistols have been used in some um, action movies that I grew up watching so the Ruger P series in stainless was used in Desperado those were the firearms that he Antonio Banderas shot out of his sleeves 
um, and he, you know, they popped up to his hands, and then he went nuts, blowing people away. And then there's the other scene where he's in the library, and he's trying to, he's trying to load a magazine, and he's trying to manipulate the slide like really quietly, and he doesn't want to make any noise with it, so he's really trying to ease the slide back forward. And then also one of my other favorite movies, um, as I was in my teenage years and these action movies were coming out, was True Lies. True Lies was, it had comedy, had Schwarzenegger, had Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold was hilarious in it. And it had Tia Carrere, who was fine as could be. And uh, let's not forget the Jamie Lee Curtis scene uh, where she does like the strip tease thing and it's hairy and he's got the tape recorder. Hilarious. Um, so anyhow, uh, Harry used one of these. It was, his, uh, I think his was the, might have been the 45. But anyhow, it looked just like this Ruger P series stainless slide, and it's actually on the cover shot. Uh, I think he's doing something like this for the cover shot, the one of the press release photos. So these are really cool. I like them. Some people, you know, laugh about them or whatever. But seriously, for a sub $300 pistol that's going to last a lifetime. These are a great value. And they're a blast to shoot because there's hardly any recoil at all on them. So uh, I can't wait for my mags to be here. They're going to be here later on this week. The weather is awful, but we're looking at a warm-up coming soon, so I'm hoping that I can go outside and get some uh, footage for you guys of shooting these things. So I appreciate you guys watching. I hope to hit that 1,000 subscribers so I can give away that holster soon. Uh, go comment on that video because I think only a couple people have commented that they actually want that holster, so it's going to be really easy to give it away. So uh, take care. Thanks for watching. Shoot safe.